Ah. Do you make noises when you sit down or when you stand up? <laughs> do you make noises when you get out of bed in the morning? I do. I'm getting, I'm getting up there. And so I noticed that, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, I would start making noises in the morning like that didn't relate to anything I was doing, you know? <laughs> not random, like lip movement, <sighs> not that kind of noise, but just like old boat noises when I would get out of the bed in the morning. Kind of funny. Well, that's where I am in life. So I don't know when that started. I might have been doing that when I was five, but I started noticing it recently. <laughs> Do you make noises when you move around? It reminds me of a story. My son Jonathan and I were in downtown Seattle in our car pulled up to a busy intersection and a few folks walk by in front of us. And just as the light was getting ready to change, the last guy walks across in front of us. And he looked a little bit like he was in pain. Um, he looked like he had, um, how do we say, lived a life. <laughs> and as we were watching him, John and I were silent. As we were watching him walk across in front of us, I glanced over at Jonathan to see what he was thinking. And uh, he said, you know, it occurs to me that people don't actually have words in their head when they're out by themselves moving around, that everyone has a noise in their head. <laughs> and I laughed at the idea that everyone has a noise. And so we're looking at this guy, looking at other people. Everyone has a noise in their head. It's kind of funny. So I, I said, what's, what's his noise? And uh, Jonathan said, Aah. That's the noise that was in his head. Since then, I've had a fun time with that. What's that guy's noise? What's that lady's noise? Kind of fun. But in reality, most of us don't just have a noise in our head. Most of us have a voice in our head. Now, not the folks who have multiple voices talking back and forth in their head. Now, we're not talking about that, but you and I tend to have a voice in our head. Timothy Galway, back in the 70s, wrote a book called The Inner Game of Tennis. Highly recommend it. He's got another follow-up called The Inner Game of Golf. Pretty good stuff. In it, he points out a simple concept that you and I have got an inner narrator. And the voice is not some weird voice from somewhere. It's us talking to ourselves. So the point of this conversation today is to get you to pay a little bit of attention to that inner voice because it's likely that your inner voice, your inner narrator, is not your friend. <laughs> and we want that inner narrator to work with us, not against us. And again, it's not some weird out, outer voice. It's you talking to you. It's me talking to me. So did you hear that? Did you hear what you said to yourself? Did you, did you hear when things got difficult or challenging? Did you hear what you said to yourself? If you're aware of this, you can actually see it in other people. One of my favorite things to do is to watch athletes, especially if it's in a broadcast situation on a big screen TV where the camera zooms in on their face after they've made a mistake. Basketball is probably the easiest sport to see that in. And they'll make a shot, they'll miss the shot, and the camera will come right in on their face, especially if there's a pause in action right after they've missed the shot. Have some fun with this. Watch basketball, any other sport. Watch the face of the athlete after he or after she misses something, misses a shot or makes a mistake. You can probably tell what their inner narrator is doing and what their inner narrator is saying. Now, Galway, along with many other people who have subsequently studied this, has the idea that high-performance athletes have learned how to change their inner narrator without even realizing it shows up on their face. Somebody who performs very, very well, consistently under pressure, when they make a mistake or don't perform well, looks different on their face than someone who has not noticed and harnessed and changed this inner narrator. That's what we're talking about today. Did you hear that? Did you hear that inner narrator? Pause for a second and think, have you talked to yourself already today? Maybe you were 20 minutes late for something. Did you talk to yourself about being 20 minutes late? Maybe you made a mistake in some way. How, how did you talk with yourself about that mistake? Then, if you have an inner narrator that tends to be hypercritical, you will not be able to help it. You will also then face that outwardly with other people you will be hypercritical of other people. And when they walk across in front of your car, instead of just observing them, you will rip them to shreds internally because you are well-practiced at that by doing it on yourself. 
high performers, that is folks who perform very, very well under lots of pressure, leaders like you or managers or supervisors, folks who are trying to influence groups of people, whether it be their family or a whole enterprise or a swath of society, have learned how to manage that inner narrator. This reminds me of another quick story. Donnie, back in the day, took a job uh, for the Port of Tacoma. And uh, on his first day, was it your first day, Donnie, or one of your first days? Was it your very first? It was like two weeks. It was my first day um, leading the commission meeting. Okay, big commission meeting. And Donnie had to show up and, and lead the commission meeting. So he was all dressed fancy. Now you walk into the big building where the Port of Tacoma headquarters is, Stephen, to this day, and it's a big open atrium kind of building with offices around the outside of it, two or three stories tall, beautiful building. Then I walked in and, and, and um, up a, land, a landing of stairs because his office was on the second or third floor, so he's going up, on, came to his first landing with a Starbucks coffee in hand and tripped and stubbed his toe just a little bit. And when he did, squeezed his coffee cup, right? right? And it launched the coffee up onto what he was wearing and onto the glass partition that was the edge of the stairwell and splashed on that and splashed on the floor. And you probably said something rather creative at that moment in time. His voice rang out, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, Donnie did not have an inner narrator. <laughs> and of course, because of where it was, because it's an open atrium building, they voice, his voice just echoed, right? <laughs> Everyone heard it. People like groundhogs stuck their head out of the hole of their cubicle to see what had actually happened. And then afterwards, his inner narrator kicked into gear. He's told me a story about what he said to himself, what he thought about that event. Think about yourself when you trip and drop coffee, or whether it's literal or metaphorical, when something happens that is difficult or not as you had planned. How do you talk to yourself? That's what this is all about. And I wanna challenge you to actually pay attention to your inner narrator, because for most of us, unless we have learned this skill I'm gonna show you in a moment, our inner narrator is not our friend. Our inner narrator, we, that's us talking to us, does not have an accurate view of what's going on, is hypercritical, is not all that helpful, and like I said, is not your friend. Imagine if you were to speak to your friend, someone you care a lot about, someone you work with, someone you love, when they made a mistake, precisely the way you speak to yourself when you make a mistake, well, that friendship wouldn't last very long. Those people would distance themselves from you quite a bit. So that's what our inner narrator is. It's us narrating what's going on around us. And usually, when things are going well, the inner narrator is quiet for most of us. But when things don't go as we had hoped or planned or dreamed, that's when our inner narrator steps up to the microphone, takes, con takes control, takes charge, and starts talking to us. Pay attention to your inner narrator. Now, there's another idea I want to toss in here real quickly because it's very important that you notice this thing that happens whenever you and I notice something, we will tend to notice more of it. We've got a system in our mind called the reticular activating system. That reticular activating system is almost like a superpower of ours. It's the ability to create patterns and then recognize things that fit within that pattern. It's very powerful and very fast. It's how you can find your car in a big Costco parking lot or something like that. The reticular activating system helps us spot things that we're looking for. So if you're looking for the color red, you will see more red. You won't see as much yellow. You may not see yellow at all. You'll see red, for example. If you're listening for the way someone speaks, if they have a certain rhythm to the way they speak, or if they use the word um a lot when they're talking, You'll hear that if you look for it over and over and over. That's because of your reticular activating system. Now your inner narrator uses the reticular activating system and causes you and I to look for whatever that inner narrator is being critical of or observing. So you're so clumsy. I can't believe you tripped and fell on your first day. You're going to have coffee stains all over you. I can't believe that. How could you be so clumsy? inner narrator sets into play the reticular activating system so that you would notice how many other times you were clumsy. And if you noticed a lot of those, then you'd start noticing in other people. You'd become critical of other people. It's because the inner narrator highlighted something and that's what you're going to find more of. 
The reticular activating system, by the way, is neutral. It's amoral. It's not looking for good or bad. It's just looking for something. So if you point something at a, at a negative or critical side, then that's what you're going to find. The reticular activating system will go looking for it, and it'll find more of it. Now, we don't change the facts on the ground by looking for things, but we do change how we respond. That's our reticular activating system. Now, back to your inner narrator. My, my challenge to you is to change your inner narrator so that that self-talk, that inner voice, can work for you and not against you. Then, as you become even slightly practiced at this, you will be able to help other people to do the same thing. Why should we change this? Because if you have an inner narrator focused on what's wrong, that's all you'll see. And you'll have actions, behaviors, or you'll choose to not engage based upon a faulty and partial picture of yourself and of what's going on. If you focus on strengths or what's working well, if you focused on problems that were solved, you'll see more of those and you'll change your behavior. You and I change our behavior based upon our inner narrator and the unleashing of the patterns found and developed by our reticular activating system. We don't change the facts on the ground. You don't get to walk outside and say, it's not raining, it's not raining. And it is raining and suddenly it stops. It doesn't work that way but we do get to change our behavior around the facts on the ground. So how can you, if you're one of these folks who's got an inner narrator that's just like a critic or a judge, and it's just me, 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 if that's how you talk to yourself, and I'm right up in your grill on this one, and you're really relating to this, how do you change it? Four things. Number one, notice. Notice how you talk to yourself. Just take a few days and notice it. That's all. If you're super critical of yourself, your inner narrator will also start being critical of the fact <laughs> that you're critical of yourself and will pile on. Look how critical you are. I can't believe you're so critical. What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's what'll happen. Here's the step. Just notice it. So you're aware of your own inner narrator's tone and topics. Second step, change the tone of your inner narrator from an inner critic to an inner observer. If you do this three or four times over the smallest things, you'll rewire how your inner narrator works. It's very easy to do. Instead of, you're such a klutz, I can't believe you tripped the coffee, tripped and spilled coffee. Instead of that, your inner narrator go, oh, you spilled coffee. It's on the glass. It's on your shirt. Period. That's it. Instead of, I can't believe you're such a poor time manager, you're late, you should have known there was going to be a traffic accident. How do you live with yourself? Instead of that kind of inner narrator, your inner narrator will become an inner observer and will say, huh, 20 minutes late, period. Not should have, not would have, not could have, just an inner observer. Oh, I noticed that I dropped that. I noticed that I missed a point. I noticed that I misspelled that word. I noticed that my mind wandered in the meeting and I wasn't able to actually listen to what that person said, period. You don't add the commentary at the end. How do you live with yourself? None of that stuff. <laughs> Just become an inner observer. Wow, this is powerful. Because if you are good at this part right here, then you're also going to be good at what we talked about in another video called the OIC. And Drew will throw a card right up here somewhere to help you get to that video if you're interested. It's a wonderful way of communicating with people when you want to solve a problem or you want to understand where something is going, where it came from. It's a way of communicating where you just make an observation and you don't add to it all the critical judgment that goes with it. So that's step two. Change your tone of your inner narrator to become an inner observer. Step three, change the topic that the inner narrator narrates about from what isn't working to what is working. From, oh, that should happen, from the shooting all over yourself stuff that the inner narrator does, change that to gratitude. I am thankful for this. Oh, look at that. I'm thankful for that. Oh, look at this. I'm thankful for that. Oh, that didn't happen. I'm grateful for that. Like that, okay? Change your inner narrator's topic to one of gratitude. 
Discipline yourself to talk to yourself about what you're grateful for. Those three steps will then set you up for the fourth, fourth step. And that is that when you're performing under a lot of pressure, you're really intense, you really have to perform well, silence even the inner observer. Don't narrate what you're doing to yourself. Be fully into that conversation, fully into that presentation, fully into developing that Excel spreadsheet or fixing that transmission or engaging with somebody who is in conflict. Whatever it is, fully into that creative endeavor, don't narrate at all. Have that inner narrator who was an inner observer, who before that was an inner critic, just become quiet. That will put you in a state of flow or in the zone. You'll perform at an amazingly high level. All right. This then, as you practice it, doesn't take very long, by the way. It doesn't take very long at all. You, within a week, within a week and a half, you'll have this mastered. It's that amazing how fast it works. This will set you up to then notice other people's inner narrators because they'll show it on their face and they'll be hypercritical of other people as well. They may even say their inner narrator stuff out loud, that kind of thing. I can't believe I'm so stupid like that. Oh, wait, that's your inner narrator talking then share this video with them. Hey, got something for you to watch. <laughs> and then just like with all due respect, it's what we call the, uh, the breath mint thing. You know, if you take a breath mint and then you offer one to someone else and they say, no, I'm fine. You keep your hand out and you say, uh, no, you're not. You probably need a breath mint. <laughs> it's like this. Hey, I got a video for you to watch. No, I'm fine. Yeah, you should probably watch this video. <laughs> that might be a way you can help others as well. It is a massive, massive difference. So you remember, Leadership can be hard. Management, supervision, influencing people, doing it well because people deserve good leadership. It can be really hard. But my friend, don't make it harder than it needs to be by having a mean-spirited, critical inner narrator. Hey, if you like this, how about hitting that like button? It lets the YouTube brain know that this is something that people are engaging with. If you got a comment, throw it in the comment section down below. Subscribe. You might not know that this is free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to this. That's the way YouTube lets you know when new stuff comes out. Then there's a bell over there. Click that bell, and then they'll also let you know within your email or on your YouTube app that you've got a new one coming out because we drop these every single week. I hope this is helpful. Ah. I'm going to enjoy listening to my inner narrator. What? What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> Here's to you. Have a great day.